All right. So, can this Wolves team really be taken seriously? Right now, after tonight's game, they are seventh in the West. And it seems like on a nightly basis, this is a guy who knows this organization inside and out. Henry Lake watches every single game. You break him down on WCCO Radio on mm-hmm. your show. And really, where is this club in your mind? Is this team really ready to go somewhere? I'm not sure that they're ready to go. So, and the reason why I say this is because but I don't. They, we I don't, brought I, you here for this. Yeah, so. but I don't. I don't think that they're sure. I'm saying I don't think that they're sure about who they are quite yet because they're without Carl Anthony Towns. So, like, when you're not whole, how do you know who you ultimately are? What is your identity? Now they're playing better basketball right now, but that's without Cat, and we know eventually he's going to come back to the team. Right. One thing you brought up when we spoke earlier about this is the thing that will make you believe this team is for real is when they start beating teams they should. Yeah. We've had several examples, including Friday night when they lost to Orlando. Why do you think that happens? And yeah. what does that say to you when they do beat these bottom feeders? Well, you know, when they beat the bottom feeders, it says that they are serious, they're committed, and that they're maturing. When they're losing to these teams that they're better than, that tells me that they're not taking it seriously. And so, like, that's a true sign of an organization and a team taking the next step, going to the next level, is when the team that you're su- supposed to beat, right. you beat them. And right now, they're a team that's very Jekyll and Hyde. It's like you look at them losing to, like, the Houston Rockets or the <laughs> Orlando Magic, and then all of a sudden they jump up and they'll beat the Grizzlies or they'll beat the Nuggets when, when the Nuggets are healthy. Actually and that's just, people, yeah. yeah, yeah, when they actually have guys. So that's got to be super frustrating for Coach Chris Finch because you should be beating up on teams that are lesser talented than you are. Yeah. All right, the big question that uh, Wolves fans have been wrestling with is, the Rudy Gobert tree. Mm-hmm. Ever since it's happened, they go this way, they go that. They gave up too much. He's not giving them what they want. He's here now, and he's involved in this, but the team's still hanging around 500. It looks a lot like last year's team. Where are you on the Rudy tree? All right, so on the record, I believe that they gave up too much. But with that being said, I do believe that Wolves fans have been a little bit uh, too upset about Rudy being here from the standpoint of what he gives this organization. If you look at the way that they have played here over the course of the last three weeks, okay. Rudy's not the problem in itself, right? Like, like yeah. if you look no, at how he's played, if you look at his numbers, if you look at his impact on the team, he's been fine. The question is... What type of adjustment do the Timberwolves make when Cat is playing alongside him? I don't have an issue with Rudy Gobert and how he plays basketball, but can he play alongside Cat? That is the million-dollar question, and I'm not sure that that is something that's going to be able to work. When everybody around the league is going smaller, we're trying to go big. Right. It's it's different to say the least, and it'll you know they just haven't had enough time. The injury is is what it is, right? Yeah. We're not going to debate he should he be back, blah blah blah. We'll, That's not for this conversation, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. But the trading deadline is Thursday. Wolves have some interesting decisions to make here because number one is they have to decide what to do with D'Angelo Russell. Earlier this year, everybody, I think, was all in like, yeah, okay, we've seen it up. Now, all of a sudden, he's playing lights out. He needs a contract or the Wolves are going to lose him at the end of the year. So where are you with D'Angelo Russell? I say you keep him for the rest of the season. Now, You know, you're always going to try to make a trade if it's going to better your team and and, and, and put your organization in, um, I guess, um, a situation to where they can move forward and they're going to get a good player back. I don't know what you're going to get back for D'Angelo Russell on an expiring contract. Right. I say that you keep him because, number one, if you just tried to trade him off for – you're not getting a first-round pick. If you're trading him for a couple other, you know, role players and then maybe some second-round picks – Does that impact you going to the postseason? Does that impact you going to the playoffs? And if it means that you're going to do that and it impacts you in a negative way going to the postseason, especially with Jordan McLaughlin being kind of often injured this year, I don't make that move. I let that money um, come off the books and you look to sign a free agent in free agency. Yeah, because this franchise can't afford to miss the playoffs. They need a win. They need to have some success. And if it ends up giving Russell away at the end, Mm -hmm. then that's fine. If you get through at least one round, you make a a serious step up, 
in your franchise. Yep. And then D'Angelo walks, so you have nothing to show for it. I'm not ready to go ahead and trade D'Angelo Russell and then think about missing the postseason. That's not what we signed up for. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, already a big move today, even though the trading deadline is Thursday. Kyrie Irving goes from the Nets. We got to the Kyrie. Mavericks. I didn't know that. Yes. Well, that's why we had you in here tonight, because this is the big deal. My phone didn't ring. Yeah, he could have been the free agent. Should the Wolves have kicked the tires on this guy? No. Um, <laughs> I, I think that Kyrie Irving, as phenomenal a basketball player as he is, he's, he's one of the all time great point guards. Uh, he has a ridiculous handle. He can score the basketball. He can do everything. Um, I'm just not a fan of who he is as a person, you know, personally. Um, I think he's shown himself to be a bad teammate. He was a bad teammate walking out of Cleveland with LeBron James. He was a bad teammate in Boston with the Celtics, and he shut the door on them. He's been a bad teammate to KD and the Brooklyn Nets. Why would I want him here? And he's the guy that wants a multi-year contract. What team out there is going to give him a multi-year contract? Is is well, yeah, is, that's is what Dallas, he wants. He is, wants a four-year max. Is is Mark Cuban going to do that? I mean, more power to you, Mark, <laughs> because I'm not signing up for a guy that plays when he wants to play, and he's going to put out a bunch of conspiracy theories and and some very dangerous and um, anti-Semitic remarks. I'm not signing up for that. Yeah. All right. So, do the Wolves make a move? Do you want them to make a move? Should they make a move at this deadline? I don't think that the question is, should they make a move? Can they make a move? I just don't think that they're in a position where they can make a move. When you look at D'Lo, I, I think that, you know, D'Lo is probably somebody that people are discussing and talking about. I know that the other rumor out there is about Nas Reed. And, and, and to me, if I, I guess Nas would be the – he would be the one that I would look at because if Nas – is of the thinking that he's not going to come back to Minnesota because they're just not going to have enough money to pay him, right. then I think that you probably try to get something for him. I think that he's in a unique situation. Yeah, and if you get Towns back and you see he's healthy, mm -hmm. although it is Thursday, so you don't have much time to decide. Yep. But with those two bigs going, there's not really room for Nas in a meaningful way, right? No, no. And when Cat comes back anyway, Nas's minutes kind of, it goes down dramatically and he's played fine I think that he's he's covered it maybe by a few teams around the league he's a he's a really good basketball player that's developed within the organization but I'm not sure that uh, they're going to be able to be able to have him here long term and another guy is Jalen Noel will yeah. he come back too yeah no that's true too all right also on the horizon is the NBA all-star game mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards was left off the original roster disappointing many Wolves fans are you on their side saying he got snubbed he got here? snubbed <laughs> The Ant-Man, we want the Ant-Man in Utah. The Ant-Man should be on the All-Star team. Look, I think that there were a couple of guys that you look at and you say that they had the potential to be All-Stars in terms of um, the reserves. Anthony Edwards is one. De'Aaron Fox is another. Um, Paul George is somebody that is on the squad, but I look at Paul George and maybe I just feel like they put him in because the Clippers are having a better season than the Wolves. Right. But Paul George has missed a bunch of games. I think that right now, one of the problems that I have with the All-Star game selections is we're putting people on the team that um, are injured, that are hurt, and a lot of it boils down to name recognition. Yeah, and Edwards, the big thing is that he played every, every single game. Yep. game. That's yep. the point that I think should be rewarded for in this day of and he's taking the high road he's taking the high road because yeah. he said i started yeah, off slow yeah. yeah but i i think the ant should be there yeah well hopefully he gets there with curry going out now maybe yep. he'll get the call and finally the coaching of chris finch some observers say the wolves aren't playing up to their potential like those games we talked about the houston game the orlando game and some are pointing the fingers back at the coach not getting the team ready mm -hmm. how do you feel Finch has done running this group I like Chris Finch I think that he is a, a good coach uh, develops great offense draws it up fine um, I, I think that the guys have to showcase some maturity though Chris Finch is not a basketball coach that's going to hold guys hands it's, it doesn't work like that and he knows that there's only so much that he can do so right. like when you lose basketball games of course as a head coach you're going to take some criticism and he should he's not been a flawless coach he would admit that but I think he's doing a fine job how about the times you hear all the post game comments you talk about them afterwards on your show I get some of the calls where <laughs> where he says you know well I really don't know what happened here tonight that's not an answer that you want to convey that I think you it's don't him know. not wanting to throw guys under the bus. Okay. I think that that's all that that is. I, I think that there are some nights where he will step up and he will say more, but I think a lot of times when he's really upset, <laughs> 
he takes a chill pill. <laughs> All right.